what is going on y'all it's coco welcome back to the channel today we have the yamaha pss 170 man this thing is cute i really really do like these little small 49 key keyboards uh this one right here um i got this from an auction goodwill auction and uh they said everything worked on it it does take c batteries which i don't have any c batteries i only have two c batteries so i gotta buy some more so i can test the battery compartment out but I did notice earlier when I was working on this and I went to go ahead and plug in the power supply that the uh, it didn't want to turn on at first. Now, if you can see here, it is turned on. Right. Now I'm going to mess around with this. This You see that? I don't know if it's going to show. See how that's out now? Now, I see, that's what exactly what I was talking about. That's a problem. So when they tested it, they probably didn't jiggle that. But even when I just went to plug it in, when I first turned it on, this is what happened. And I kind of had to jiggle it. So that means we're going to get to open this baby up and see if we can get that fixed. So that's not a problem. So let me go ahead and get this thing opened up. So I desoldered the solder that was on there. I didn't see any cracks or anything and I checked for continuity. Everything seems to be good. So I'm just going to reflow the solder on there, get a really good connection in there. And we're going to retest this and see if that fixes that issue. Alrighty. So I have everything, the solder reflowed. I put the cable back. I make sure you put those cables back. So let's take this over to the test bench and see if that fixed that issue. Guys, yeah, So we got the keyboard over here and the test area gonna go ahead and plug this in see what we get still not turning on if I wiggle it it turns on so that lets me know that it has to be that jack so I'm gonna replace the jack in this see if that fixes the problem so let's go back to the workbench and try again don't always get it right the first time but we can try again so i'm waiting on my soldering iron to heat up and i just want to tell you guys um there's a couple of screws you've got to take out i left these two in just to let the board stay steady but you shouldn't have to desolder anything other than this connect this cable here and then obviously desoldering that so you can take the component out we should be able to slide the board back and flip it because it's not really being held down by too much. And because it's just that small connector and the board is not that big, I think I'll be able to get it out without having to desolder these cables here. So let me go ahead and work on desoldering this and getting this connector out and we'll get it replaced. Alrighty, got the new jack in. So I'm going to get everything put back together, go back to the test bench and try it again and see if that solved the issues. Alrighty guys, so over here on the workbench and we're gonna go ahead and plug this back in. Remember when we plugged it in, it sometimes wouldn't even turn on. We got our new jack in. Oh man, that turned on fine. Let's move the jack around. Nothing. It's not cutting off. It's not intermittent. The issue has been fixed. So that was the problem. It needed a new jack. So if you have one of these keyboards and you're having intermittent power issues and you've reflowed the solder and it's still doing the same thing, just go ahead and replace the jack. I like to go ahead and make sure I try everything before just going in and replacing a part. Um, and then I realized later on, I was like, if it did have a cold solder joint, it wouldn't have even been turning on. So um, anyway, I'm happy that I was able to get this one repaired. This is another one saved from the landfill and the shredders. If you like this kind of content, make sure you give it a thumbs up. I appreciate you guys for tuning in and shout out to all my new subscribers and my new subscribers to come. I appreciate you guys until next time. Peace. Mm -hmm.